Well, let me, let me begin by saying that the, uh, my, my interpretive key, which I think is faithful to the gospel, is the well-being of the neighbor. So in, uh, in the book of Galatians, uh, uh, Paul writes that love of the neighbor is the whole sum of the gospel. Shoot. Now, if you take that, then if you take any of these uh, things like money, time, all of that, uh, the question about money is how is our money connected to the reality of the neighbor? And that has to do with how we earn our money, how we invest our money, how we spend our money, how we save our money, and how we give our money away. If you take the neighbor out of the equation, uh, then you can earn money any way you want, and you can keep it all for yourself, and you can give none away, etc., etc., etc. We don't have to talk about it in church. That's right. Yeah. So mainly, the church doesn't talk about money, except in the stewardship season when it wants to raise the church budget, when in fact uh, the church's stake in uh, a gospel handling of money doesn't pertain basically to the church budget, it pertains to our practice of money in the public political economy. And people would think that that's private and not... That's correct. That. And yeah. What, what is the church and yeah. missing out on by... Yeah. Well, we, the, one, one, of the, one of the obvious uh, uh, results of that is that we do not think that taxation uh, is a theological question. But if you put the neighbor in the equation, then uh, the question is, what kind of taxes should we pay and how should they be deployed toward the well-being of the neighbor? That would, that would r radically change the conversation. Right, because I don't understand what that has to do with bootstrapping. Uh, no, it doesn't have anything to do with bootstrapping, so far as I know. <laughs> John Wesley, the, the great the Methodist godfather, uh, said that the, the idea is to earn all you can and save all you can and give away all you can. That's pretty good for starters. Uh, obviously, it's much more complex than that. And not sustainable. Uh, oh, it's quite sustainable. You can scale that up how? Uh, well, it's easy to say, earn all you can. Uh, it's easy to uh, say, uh, save all you can. So Wendell Berry uh, has made a great advocacy of saying we have an obligation to be frugal. It is, a, it is an ethical obligation to be frugal, says he. I think that's right. But uh, not Jesus. Pardon me? Not Jesus didn't say that, though. Uh, I think Jesus would have said that about self in order to be extravagant in generosity toward the neighbor. So give away all you can. Uh, and uh, what we know about the practice of abundance uh, is uh, that giving away more than we imagine we can give away uh, is uh, uh, an evocation of great well-being and great joy. Was that that flies in the face, that flies in the face of our current capitalist theory that inherently is committed to parsimony toward the neighbor. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that parsimony means. Uh, don't give anything away to anybody if you can help it. And one of the one of the one of the dramatic expressions of that uh, is the incredible uh, cutback on food stamps and uh, uh, government assistance uh, to people who are very very needy under the under the mantra of scarcity that the worst thing in the world that can happen is somebody needy might get something for nothing. And that just causes shivers in capitalist theory. Well, it'll keep them from growing because they won't have intention, you know. They'll... Well, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the point to accent, it seems to me, is that uh, any responsible uh, evangelical, by which I mean gospel, 
understanding of money is a profound contradiction uh, to the dominant assumptions of our capitalist system. And it seems to me that the church, it's very, very hard to do, but the church has an obligation to help people struggle with that contradiction, I think. Whereas, for the most part, the institutional church has tried to hide the contradiction so that people do not notice uh, the problematic. They're open about like asking for money for the church, yeah. but there's not that light put on money. Correct. That's right. There's, is there, there's no imagining, there's no invitation in, into something to participate in, right? Well, and there's, and there's no willingness, very little willingness, to raise systemic questions about how we have become committed to a greed system. Uh, and, and many of us, many of us who are really quite innocent are uh, beneficiaries of the greed system. What's the greed system? Well, the greed system is uh, uh, maintained through uh, regressive taxation, uh, payday loans, uh, wage theft, uh, all of those things we know about how to keep vulnerable people from getting resources and uh, squandering all the resources on people that already have more resources than we are likely to need. That's sin? That's a good word for it, yes. <laughs>